welcome back to the channel. Today you join me in the 2016 BMW M4 convertible. Okay, so a lot of you guys, if you follow my channel, you've seen the cars that I've that I've been driving recently. Uh, my last vehicle was a, was a Toyota Supra, which was a little four cylinder. This is quite a different uh, quite a different experience. This thing not only is it an inline six cylinder, but it's also it's also twin turboed and it's also got heaps more horsepower and heaps more torque. So we should be able to see that in the, in the experience. Uh, not to mention it's a convertible, so you're gonna get a whole lot more from, from the exhaust, from, the, from just the whole experience around you. So again, the numbers here, 423 uh, horsepower, I believe, in, in this standard model. I believe there's a competition up from this. Um, 400 foot, uh, 440 foot pounds of torque uh, from a uh, twin turboed three liter inline six cylinder. Okay, so on paper, this thing absolutely goes. This thing has got power, and we're gonna experience that. Oh, this thing is, this thing is fierce. Fierce. Absolutely fierce. It just goes. So guys, the, the first couple things that I noticed when I first get in the vehicle is the one, obviously, the visibility. You know, we're sitting in a convertible. So there's there's a there's an extra little bit of, of comfort and visibility when you're in a when you're in a convertible. There's no eight pillar on both sides. You know, you can see all around you. It's it's pretty comfortable sort of experience. The flip side to that is that you're kind of always on display. So anytime you get up to a you know a set of lights, especially being in an M4, a performance vehicle. You know, everyone's looking at you, and, you know, wondering what kind of car it is, who's in the car, and it's it's a little bit, go, 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 and it's a little bit of, um, it gets to be a bit much, to be honest. From a personal standpoint, I'm not, I'm not really one to be on display all the time, uh, and it's just, it's non-stop. So, something to consider. Uh, the things that I do notice right away when I get in this car is the the comfortability. So when I'm sitting in the cockpit here, very very different to the Supra, is that I've got a lot of leg room. I've got a nice sort of comfortable sort of cockpit. And when I say comfortable, I mean it's just spacious. This is a this is a two plus two sort of sports car, but I'm not in like this when I'm driving it. I don't feel like the roof line for obvious reasons, but even when the top is up. I don't feel like the roof line is chopping my head off, you know what I mean? So BMW have really, BMW in my opinion have, have really done well here in my, in, my, um, in my opinion with just the styling of the car um, to make it just a comfortable place to be. And so obviously the, the spec of this one is pretty high. If you look at my, uh, if you watch my first video of the of this car we did a full review of it all the carbon fiber interior the whole infotainment system all that stuff um, so definitely I suggest that you uh, that you take a look at that and just uh, you know see the beauty of this of this car and all the all the features that it has to offer um, in filming this I'm really hoping that my my voice is coming in well um, because with a convertible comes a lot of like a lot of air, a lot of sound, um, and I'm not exactly just out for a little Sunday drive. I'm actually driving her pretty, uh, pretty hard. So, hoping you're capturing my sound. Um, again, the, the competitors for this vehicle, you know, C63, uh, Audi, uh, S5, RS5. Those are sort of the main competitors. Maybe the GT4, Cayman, stuff like that. Um, just the performance sort of vehicles. Sound 
to it, that's for sure. It's got some really good sound to it. You can really get the cracks and the bangs kind of going on, which is which is pretty awesome. Uh, so, you know, as I'm driving the car, it's got a heads-up display, which is really, really nice. Again, it's got all the all the comfort sort of features of, you know, of a luxury German vehicle. That's what you expect when you get into the car, right? Um, I do love the analog gauges, that kind of old school sort of feel. Um, and then what I noticed right away, and you know, this is gonna sound pretty obvious, this car absolutely goes. And when I say it goes, I mean like, it's just non-stop, relentless power from a dig, from a get-go. You know, a lot of cars, you know, they go fast once they get up to, you know, once they start going. This thing from a dig, just zero to 60, is bang, out the gate. Um, and then just immediate power, constant power. I'm obviously driving it on the paddle shifts all the time, paddle shifters, uh, but it's just constant, relentless sort of power, which I love. So, I mean, from a day-to-day -day sort of standpoint, just hooting around in this in this thing, it's uh, it's pretty fun to be with. It's got some really, really good sound coming out the, the quad um, the exhaust. I don't know if you can capture that. And then you get this nice, as the, as the turbos start to spool up, obviously it's twin turbo, so it comes on in the lower rev range, and then again in the, the sort of higher rev range. But you can really hear the turbo sort of. Really hear it sort of coming on nicely, um, which is really, really cool. In my opinion, this car, I mean, for, 75 80 grand us um you know it's a it's a pretty expensive car but i i actually think it's pretty good value for the money um it does just about a, everything a c63 will do you know with just not quite as good a sound not quite um and then the agility of it is everything. The the sportiness of, of the of the you know we, they call it a BMW. It's supposed to be sporty. It's supposed to be the sporty car in the class. I'm seeing why people sort of you know gravitate more to this car. It's it's very sort of livable. It's very you know fun to drive you know on a day to day basis. Um, so yeah, just just sitting here at a light, looking around me. You know the car when it's idling. You know, I'm in Sport Plus mode. It's got a nice little growl to it. Um, the cool thing is that you can go into a efficient mode. There are three modes. You can go into efficient mode, and then you really get a dead sort of quiet tone where nothing, nothing comes out. So if you're driving with the wife and you want it to be silent, you want the car to be a bit more silent, you can, you can easily sort of get that, right? Just by shifting the mode over. Um, and then it obviously has has Sport Plus that I'm in right now, which is which is this mode, where you can unleash sort of unleash hell, right? Which is really really cool. All these all these new sports cars with the with the sort of split personalities, very cool. this car for about two days now you know I've really sort of experienced it last last night I went for a drive the heads-up display was amazing at night with your with your music on and stuff like that this is a really really sort of cool toy I think the only way I would have this this convertible is if I had another car so if I had a nice SUV or some of that and this was my kind of like my secondary Sunday car I think I'd go the convertible option uh, for me I'm probably gonna go coupe because I have to live with it sort of every day. Um, you know, when it rains, the last couple days it has been raining on and off. Uh, we managed to film quite a bit of, of you know, a video, but the rain was on and off, and it, it just becomes a, a bit of a, a bit of a pain in the butt when it's just constantly. anything it has its it has its upsides it has its downsides goods and bads um, the good thing about it is that you get the full experience from that exhaust which is absolutely heavenly so um, 
so yeah, just in terms of styling, um, obviously everyone knows the BMW sort of styling. You can see it sort of as you watch this video. We have a drone go and we have some different angles. And the nice minimalistic sort of kidney grills. The big thing for me is that the vehicle in 2021 has actually gotten a little bit, a little bit better. a couple of things you could have easily gone on there bro uh, so just a couple of things you know the suspension regardless of what mode you're in is pretty stiff like you're going over bumps I'm in sport plus I haven't really played around with the with the comfortability of the suspension and stuff like that but it's just always hard you're going over bumps and you're really feeling it so that's one of the day-to-day -day sort of things of, of living with these vehicles um, you know does it does it break your back to the point where you you know you get out and you're absolutely you know messed? It's a it's a little bit. Yesterday I you know was driving this car all day, got out and I was walking around in my house and I was like, God, why do I feel a little like why do I feel a bit banged up? And uh, you know I credit it to just going over the bumps and just driving, you know driving in that sporty sort of way all day. It's it's pretty rigid. It's pretty hard on the body. You don't really realize it, but it is. Um, so just to talk about the styling a little bit, the styling of this car is, it's first class. It's like such a traditional sort of car that everyone sort of loves. And then in 2021, they've gone and they've really done a, a big sort of style change and style upgrade is what they're calling it. Um, but the car is considerably different. Now the car has got these huge, huge sort of kidney grills on them. Um, the car is now up to 500 horsepower, which is great. It's a, it's a better car performance wise, um, but it's got this big gnarly sort of kidney grill on the front. So for me, even though the car is, is probably a better car on paper and something that I would actually, you know, the M4 competition and something that I would actually prefer to, to get myself into, I wouldn't buy this one just because it's four years old, five years old. Um, the the new the new BMW with the kidney grills and stuff like that is just I mentally have to kind of get myself around you know these these kidney grills. I just don't know from a styling standpoint if I really sort of if I really like them. Um, but other than that, the car is you know the, the new car is is amazing and it's it's something that I'm gonna try and get on the channel it's, it's a car i'm going to try and review on the channel in the next little while but we're in the old one and then if you look at pricing of the vehicles this is a 2016 i think it you know retailed for 75 70 75 probably a little higher because this one was spec'd out pretty high that's us dollars um the new ones you're looking at about 80, 85 grand for the new one. If, you, if you're specking it up the way you want it with carbon fiber and all that stuff, you've got all the like performance packages, lane keep assist and some of that. Um, you know, you're gonna get up to like 85, you know, you potentially even, you know, 87, 90 grand potentially. I'm not sure what the limitations are, but with these cars, you generally can, you know, the base small, the, the, the base price is generally not what you're gonna pay for the car. Because you need, you almost, to have a car like this, you need, you know, you want, I shouldn't say you need, but heads up display, for example, that's, that's very, very important. If you want to experience the car at night, you know, you, when you have your guidance on, your maps and stuff like that, it's a huge little perk. Um, you know, parking assist and stuff like that, right? When you get into a tricky sort of spot, you want that parking assist so you're not scuffing your rims, right? It's an $80,000, $90,000 car. You need this type of stuff, right? Um, so you can easily get, get that price way, way up. Accord fart pipe. Uh, so yeah. So I mean, after driving this car, my my initial thoughts. You know, I didn't really sort of put much put much stake in the inline six 
and hopefully people in the comments tell me what what do you what do you think of inline six the things the things amazing uh, I didn't really put much stake in in the m4 um, just because I hadn't driven it uh, and I shouldn't have knocked it before I drove it I drove an m6 before and wasn't too impressed with it um, I guess it has a big V8 in it twin turbo just felt very like bulky and lethargic I guess it's it's a it's a bit of a longer sort of vehicle after getting into this thing it's so nimble it's so sporty it's so agile um, it's a completely different experience and I, I highly recommend this car it's got the sound it, it really ticks a lot of boxes you know it ticks the the sort of classiness of the interior you know it's it's a pretty nice interior to be in it's not a mercedes-benz but it's it's nice for what it is uh, you know a sporty sort of sports car it ticks the performance box 100 100 percent it's got the performance numbers this thing's fast um, and then visibility and, and comfortability um, again i haven't reviewed the coupe um, but when this thing, when the top is up off this thing, it's the visibility is still great. You know, I can see everywhere. I can see around. Again, it's a convertible, so I'm kind of like, you know, I've got a little extra visibility. But uh, but the thing is, this this thing is faster than every car on the road. Like literally blows like the doors off of every sort of vehicle which is which is pretty cool right not too bad not too bad but every every car seems to think that it's that it's fast what else yeah just just day-to-day -day livability you know I mentioned the the you know the, the the hardness of the suspension a little bit a little bit rough but I think that's something I could get over you know for the sort of performance numbers um, yeah pretty nice sort of sort of place to be not too bad yeah so what else what else can I say about the car I mean yeah I think I love it I think I'm I think I'm in love got a little bit of traffic going on here a little little bit of an accident in front that's uh, just the, the typical sort of, you know, everyday traffic. Um, but this thing sitting in traffic is comfortable. Nice, solid, solid German leathers. Um, it's a comfortable place to be. Nice, chunky sort of leather steering wheel. Pretty happy with it. Um, so, yeah, guys, that's, that's my initial views. Um, completely sort of different mindset now on the M4. I think, you know, I'm still after a C63, but after trying this now, I'm very intrigued by the Motorsport M series, and I really want to get my hands on a 2021 um, M4, just to kind of experience that. Um, so I really feel like, I really feel like this, uh, this is an amazing car, really, really amazing car, and I, I would highly recommend to anyone who's got the money to throw down on a, on a car like this i really really recommend it for for an everyday sort of driver if you guys got something out of this uh, out of this video uh please smash the like button and uh and subscribe join our community okay uh i'll see you in the next one